Welcome, friends, to the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week, the Survivor Power Rankings. And I am pleased as punch to be joined by Survivor 43 finalist and all-around nice guy, Mr. Owen Knight. Owen, welcome. Hey, Gordon. Good to see you again, man. We we did a little bit better this week. You did a lot better. You did a lot I better. I did a lot better. You did we, all right. You did. Um, I had Claire in spot eight. Owen had her in spot 14. Uh, so he jumped up to a pretty significant lead. Right now, the current score is Team Holmes 11, uh, Team Knight 16. Uh, in the comments section, uh, Alan W., Mouse Sparks, and Tara all had Claire in spot two. Uh, Sanju did a little Ooh. bit better by having her in spot five. So not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, everyone making fun of us after the first week. Like, suck it. Yeah, I notice I'm, I'm like so thankful that anybody watches this at all. And then once they decide to play along, I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. you're terrible. <laughs> mm, survivor experts. Uh, all right, so what did you think of Claire uh, getting the boot? It's, um, you know, there's been a lot of discourse this week about, you know, the, the fate of women in the new era and just kind of the, the troubling pattern we've been seeing. Um, but, you know, it's, I see the reasoning, you know, it's, it's hard to sit out of that many challenges. And I think Danny brought up a great point that the challenge in the challenges themselves are a very bonding experience. You know, for me, having played team sports in high school, like really the challenges on Survivor were the first time I got to like flex those muscles and feel that kind of team environment in a way that I had it in well over a decade. And, and it really does emotionally bond you. So I can understand why people might not have felt as connected to her. And um, yeah, it's just it's a shame, but I, it, the vote made sense to me. I, I, I truly didn't have a problem with her sitting out um, just because I think of like a baseball team, the starting lineups, the starting lineup almost every day. Uh, so, you know, if there was something that, that played to Claire's strengths, she should have stepped up, but maybe nothing did. Uh, but then there's also a point where if she doesn't go home, another stronger challenge competitor does. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's a gray area. Again, I don't hold her against her for sitting out if she thought that was best. And she was getting some sweet info on that sit out bench. So that uh, is true. Yeah. That, that first episode Intel session with Matthew was pretty inspired. I, I like that a lot. And that's why we all had her really high and her preseason press was great. But I mean, it just goes to show like that this game can be so like you, you think someone has all the tools to succeed and then it just doesn't pan out and it's not any fault of her own. So And something yeah. actually really important that came from the sit out bench. Uh, we learned in the exit interview, feel free to check out my exit interview with Claire. Uh, she learned that Matt's idol is a fake uh, and she told Franny. Mm. So, you know, the stuff's out there. So, she, so even though she, she's, she is no longer with us, uh, the ripples of her time on that sit out bench, uh, might have some some uh, consequences wow. in the future. I, mi I miss that. That's really that's huge intel. Maybe maybe we'll get a flashback to that. Uh, Did you not in the watch my weeks. exit interview, Owen. I didn't watch it. I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed now. All right, we're done. Bye bye, guys. All right. Well, this has been fun. Yep. Bye. <laughs> Click. Anyway, the rules of the Survivor Power Rankings are as follows. Each week, our two combatants will create separate power rankings. The ranking of the person who is voted out of the next episode will determine the number of points the players will earn. For example, if Danny is voted out of the next episode, God forbid, uh, Owen will receive one point and Gordon will receive three points. At the end of the season, the person with the most points will be named the Survivor 44 Power Rankings Challenge Champion. Now, an important thing to note is that rankings are not based on who the player thinks is likely to win the whole season. Uh-uh. The smart strategy is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the upcoming vote. Got it? All right. Owen, ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Man. Love that logo. All right. Owen, who's spot number one? Number one, same as last week for me, I've got Danny in the top spot. I am absolutely loving watching Danny on my screen. He has that Tony Vlachos energy, doing barrel rolls through the jungle and eating paper and everything. Like, he's hilarious, but he's also being very slick with what he's doing. I think he pulled off the idol cage, the best of anyone, and now poor Matt is paying for it. And he's now got the useless fake idol with a real note and he's none the wiser. So I think Danny is playing great. He's clearly a physical cog to their team and they seem to be going with the physical strength um, philosophy. So I think he is in, in it for the long haul here on Soka. Well, I had uh, Carolyn in spot one because I'm there's some twist is coming, whether I don't know if that's a tribe swap or, or what's going on makes me nervous. Probably going to make the idol holders a little nervous as well. They're going to be on high alert. So I have my idol holders way up, way high up. Uh, and who is on higher alert at all times than Carolyn uh, and her two different shoes randomly? Uh, if she feel, <laughs> what is that? How does that happen? Um, if she feels uneasy about, did she steal, did she end up with Bruce's shoes? Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that extra clothes went to good use. That happened with uh, Mariah's socks. Cassidy ended up with Mariah's socks after the merge on my season. So we're always uh, 
taking stuff out there. And it gets really dark out there. So I don't blame her for putting on the wrong pair of shoes. I know a lot of you uh, were very concerned with what happened with Mariah's socks. So breaking news uh, here on the Survivor Power Rankings. Now we know. Uh, but like I said, uh, if she feels uneasy about anything, I'm very confident she's going to play that idol. So Carolyn, spot number one. All right, in spot two, I have Matthew, another idol holder, hanging onto a top spot. Um, you know, kudos for the switcheroo with Jamie, although this one feels a little less malicious uh, than the one with Danny and Matt. Danny was clearly trying to throw Matt under the bus by being like, what do you got there? I think he's got something. Did you see Matt? Uh, Matthew, it more seems like he's bringing Jamie closer, uh, and he's doing a lot, uh, a lot of things, you know, has an idol, he, he's bringing people close, and he doesn't have any blood on his hands uh, due to casting that die in that first vote. So Matthew, say, safe as, as, as a baby in his mother's arms in spot two. Plant daddy. Plant daddy. My number two, I also did not change from last week. I've got Jam Jam at number two. I do like your idea of putting the idol holders towards the top. So if I had thought of that, like a wise man like you, I maybe would have changed things up. But I think Jam Jam seems to be the just like social glue of that tribe. Everybody seems to love him. He seems to be in a really good place socially. I think if push comes to shove, I don't know if Carson would want to even work uh, with Sarah, I think he'd be in the, the trio with Carolyn and Jam Jam. So they seem to be in a good position over on, on Tika. You could argue that Jam Jam is practically an idol holder with how close he is with Carolyn. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think they, them two are really, really locked in. All right, for my number three, uh, second half of that duo, I do have Carolyn at number three. So very close to your ranking, Gordon. I think she has locked herself in with Jam Jam. She seems to have a good relationship with Carson. Those three are taking over the tribe, it seems. And as you mentioned, she's got that idol. And she really does have a great game sense. For as over the top and kooky and fun as she is, like her instincts are correct. And she's able to socially pick up on cues that I think are very impressive. So I think she will have the wherewithal to play that idol if it comes down to it. So I've got Carolyn in a nice safe spot here at number three. Okay. And I have Danny in spot three, my final idol holder. Uh, I have him high up, even though I'm a little nervous that based on what Claire told us, Matt knows his idol is a fake uh, and, and and that either Josh or Danny must have the idol for it to have happened that way. Uh, but it seems like Josh is more of an immediate target than Danny. You know, when when the other side of the alliance had to start throwing names out, it seems like Josh isn't doing a great job communicating with everybody on the tribe. And you gotta you gotta you can't leave anybody in in the dark, right? You need to 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 make everybody feel like they're a part of your plan. And so it seems like Josh is not doing that. So Danny, I love you, buddy. Uh, you're safe in spot three. Spot four, Jam Jam. No one's gonna vote you out for snoring. You're adorable. You're mega safe, my friend. You're you're the right hand of someone who has an idol. And thinking far ahead, probably someone who might have a tough time winning over a jury. So that's a really good spot. That's a really good person to have as a ride or die. Yeah. And I, I was so scared of my snoring being a detriment to my survivor game. I snore. I grind my teeth at night. I was petrified that that would get me voted out. But I'm nice to, nice to hear that Purple is not going to target Jam Jam for that. Uh, my number four, uh, same as last week, I've kept my top four all the same. I've got Brandon over on Raw 2. He seems to be providing around camp. We saw his fishing scene, so really nice job to Brandon there. And uh, he seems to be in a good social position as well with both Matthew, with Lauren. Um, so I think he is pretty pretty safe there. Um, I know some heat was on him, obviously, week one, but uh, it seems like that has kind of blown over. And obviously, his, his physicality is... Um, can be crucial in a lot of these challenges and that seems to be again another pattern we're seeing with tribe strength uh, kind of rising to the top of importance there i do have one issue with brandon um we learned he was good with magic tricks and he can't hide a key when he's <laughs> on it. like come on man like what kind of sleight of hand just like <laughs> come on buddy <laughs> this is the smallest thing i had with my phone <laughs> I would have done a better job with like a coin. My niece loves the disappearing coin trick. So mm. if I ever get on Survivor, I can. All right. So in spot five, I have Heidi. Heidi moved up a touch in my rankings this week. It seemed like obviously she was a swing vote at the Soka Tribal Council. It appears to be that Danny and her are pretty in lockstep as a, as a duo there. Maybe she is his number one. He is her number one. Um, so I think he is very safe. So ipso facto, I've got Heidi towards the top there. Um, she also seems, we saw the previous week, her and Franny uh, were chatting about Matt. Like she she seems to be socially uh, ingratiated pretty well. Um, so I think Heidi's in a really nice spot here. A okay. uh, bit of a surprise for me. I've got Franny at spot five. Yeah, I'm going to wow. complain about that showmance until the cows come home. Uh, but Franny did a fantastic job navigating things last week. She saw that Heidi wasn't going to flip and she steered her romantic road trip in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> didn't end up voting for anybody she shouldn't have voted for. So Franny, you know, just despite, again, 
I'm always going to hate the showmance, but despite that, I think Franny did a fantastic job. Yeah, I totally agree. I'll talk more about it when I get to her, but yeah, that's a very good point. She handled that voting round very well. Uh, at spot six, I have Jamie. Look, she fell for Matthew's ruse, uh, which isn't a good look, but if anything, I think this brought the two of them closer together. Uh, this was not like a Danny situation where he did it to make Matt look bad. I think, you know, they, now they share a secret. I think, you know, Matthew, if he need, if it comes out that it is fake, um, you know, he'll be able to play that off that it wasn't him. It takes the heat off of him for having an idol because he was there and part of it. I didn't think he did a great job pointing her towards the key. He was like, oh, what is that over there? That glimmery thing underneath the rock. Uh, but other than that, uh, I, I think that just brought them closer together. So, Jamie, you're a higher up uh, now in spot six. Interesting. I've interpreted that interaction totally differently, and I'll get to that when I get to Jamie. So we shall see. Okay. Um, in my sixth spot, I've got Carson on Tika. I do think he's in a nice spot with Jam Jam and Carolyn. Obviously, he would be the third wheel of that tricycle if they're able to get out Sarah. But just thinking about what happens if they lose again, which I think is is decently likely, just given their physical stature and they're down to four and whatnot, um, I can't see Carson uh you know taking a stand with sarah and going to rocks like i really don't think the guy who 3d printed every single survivor puzzle is going to let his game come down to a little rock out of jeff's bag so i think he is going to just stay strong with jam jam and carolyn if they lose just sarah's out sarah's gone and carson's in a nice spot here then on to seven i've got josh over on soka he is in the middle of the tribe for me um i'm i'm very bummed we haven't gotten more of josh um this week I felt like he was pretty safe, just given the edit of the episode, as Dalton Ross said, like, they're not going to not show Josh's transplant story. I'm sorry, I got it. What I'm did sorry. I say about mentioning that dude's name? <laughs> uh. Keep his name out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> well, some bum I, on Twitter I saw, how about that, um, was mentioning they're not going to not show Josh's transplant story as like a little backstory package if he was getting booted. So he was safe this week. I think he's right in the middle of the tribe. He showed some flexibility and willing to work with both sides and listen. Um, but I think, you know, he he was able to read the room and, and go with the numbers here. So I think Josh is kind of sitting in the middle here at seven. We had ve we have very different power rankings this this episode. I know. Last week we were all the same. This is good. Mm -hmm. This is good. This will allow for oh, some yeah. points. Uh, in spot seven, I had Dalton Ross. Uh, Lauren, I had Lauren. <laughs> oh. Uh, we didn't see much from Lauren this week, but outside of having an extra vote, there's really no reason to get rid of her. Uh, and good on her for joining the worm party. Uh, those weird things, you know, like immunity challenges can be bonding experiences. So, uh, you know, Lauren's safe and sound in spot seven. Gabler wanted us to catch worms and fry them up and call it survivor bacon, but uh, we did not get lucky and I'm not upset about it. I, I'll, here's the thing. I'll, anything that's like a food, I'll eat, but something about worms... Like, you know, when you go out after it's rained and there's just like worms everywhere, it's that that'd be a tough one for me. I, I, I'd, I'd do it, but I, it would it'd be especially tough. live. I don't want them wiggling around. Yeah. Uh, in spot eight, I have Heidi. She voted the right way. Uh, she's working with the right person who has the right idol, apparently. But if, if she's a very bad liar and I get that some people don't want to lie, but it, it, everything was so noncommittal. And again, I mentioned this in my exit interview, if you had watched it was that I used to be a copywriter. <laughs> so anytime, anytime language is not concrete, I, it drives me up a wall. So she, she's like, are you going to be voting the same way? And she's like, maybe. And po like all of these like noncommittal things would have driven me up on a wall. And if she had just lied, um, you know, then Claire wouldn't have rolled her, her shot in the dark. And it didn't, she, it didn't come up safe but if it had that would have absolutely been on Heidi's head uh so again I, I think she's safe I I I would tweak that part of the gameplay like and and you're you're and if you're I you should never have a problem lying to somebody who's about to become a jury not a, not a jury member right mm -hmm. like because absolutely. like there's, there's no harm right other than yeah, they're they're not you know, going to burn you later at final yeah, tribal exactly yeah. like you might have to have a conversation when the season's over but it's not going to affect your game so that that's my one issue with Heidi yeah, very good point that I did not bring up. Good call. Uh, my number eight, I've got Matthew. So I do have a little bit of a different opinion on you on his fake idol shenanigans. I think he might be flying a little too close to the sun here. I think he might be having too much fun, which I'm all for from a television standpoint. I think it's hilarious and fun to watch. But to me, like, if you're working with Jamie, why are you letting her be the one that uh is getting this fake idol um and it seems like it, it was hard to tell because it seemed like they were close but like in his confessional where he's like plant mommy plant mom whatever i, I don't care what she calls me like he really seemed like a little non-committal to her um so it felt just like 
I don't know, a little unnecessary in a way, but he's clearly there to play. He's having fun. I'm enjoying watching him, but I'm worried it might catch up to him. But at the end of the day, like I still have him at eight. I still think he's in a pretty good spot this week. I miss survivor fun. Like when they would show that, like, uh, my favorite all, all, all time is in All Stars where they did the fake tribal council. Oh my God, uh, so good. The Hoochie Mama tribe. That's right. Super Pole from uh, uh, Borneo. The, the first from Borneo. Oh, I, I missed that. I, I wish there were less key shenanigans and more uh, impersonating Jeff Probes on Survivor. Love it. Absolutely. Okay. So. All right. Number nine, I am staying on Ratu. I've got Laura in there. I've got her right in the middle of the tribe. That seems to be where she's positioned. I really enjoyed their camp life scenes this week with the worms, like you were talking about, like that felt more old school survivor to me. Not as much. We didn't have a journey this week. There weren't as many uh, scenes with the keys and the idols. Uh, of course, we got the fake idol stuff going on, but I'm glad we got them, got to watch them eating worms. And Lauren seems very just like bright and joyous and just her personality, I think, just draws people in. Um, she's definitely got a nice positive air about her. So she seems to be nice in, in a good spot here. And I've got her nice and safe in the middle here at nine. Uh, in spot nine, hold on to your hats, everybody. None of us are wearing hats. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Um, I've Brandon in spot nine. I know what you're thinking. What are you doing? Uh, I'll tell you. Why is he so low? And I, uh, the, the, here's the thing. If there's a tribe swap, if they somehow switch numbers or whatever happens, when that happens, challenge beast guys become targets. I'm looking at you, Survivor Nicaragua. So, so just, to, just to hedge my bet, Brandon is going to drop a little bit. And again, I don't, I don't know what the twist is, um, but just in case he ends up someplace else and they, they, the other tribe sees a, a way to get rid of him. So Brandon... Uh, sorry, buddy. Like again, you can't leave until you show us some magic tricks. That's that's my my rule. <laughs> but uh, you just just hedging my bets in case there's some kind of swap or trade. I, I like this strategy, and I haven't really thought much about a swap because on on 43, we knew 41, 42 hadn't had them. We were kind of operating under the assumption that they wouldn't. But I will say, I did pick up on something in Claire's exit press that I was reading. I didn't watch your video, but I did read a couple articles, and I noticed she said uh, there was no anticipated swaps in multiple interviews. So I wonder if there might be one. I don't know, but I found that language uh, interesting. So you've got my wheels turning now that you're now taking that possibility into our rankings game here. I love it. I love it. This is not my first rodeo. Although <laughs> when I do go to a rodeo, that will be my first rodeo. <laughs> All right. Uh, in spot 10, uh, Carson, a lot lower than you. Sarah said it, his ho words hold less weight. Uh, I think it's just a matter of time until people realize how savvy he really is. Like Carson, I love him. He's a player. And, you know, we're getting we're getting the benefit of seeing all this. But, you know, I, I think there, there's going to be a matter of time where people are, are going to come to the, the realization that, that he is very, very clever uh, and, and pretty good at this game. And I think Sarah, her like, she's not going to get Yami and Carolyn to turn on one another. And I still think that, that there's something to be done with that inheritance advantage where if she were to offer it to somebody or something along those lines might be enough to sway them to get rid of Carson. He's still he's still higher than Sarah because I still think, you know, Sarah makes the most sense. But uh, Carson in spot 10. Um, I've actually got a different scenario here. I have Franny lower than you. I've got Franny at my 10 spot here. Um, I completely agree. She played this round very, very well. She saw the writing on the wall. She didn't take any shots at anyone. But just with this showman, it's like people, they, they, they're in the minority on the numbers. It seems like they've got some inroads and some potential to stay, but uh, I am nervous a little bit that if people don't take to them or they want to get rid of them or weaken them, uh, she could be in danger. I do have her higher than Matt since she does have her vote and she doesn't have the fake idol, but I, yeah, I've got her a little bit lower than I have had recently. On to spot 11, I've got Kane over on Ratu. Kane, I was very low on last week. He's moved up a bit. It seems like he's trying to get back in people's good graces. I love the O Canada scene, even though he got the lyrics wrong, apparently. Um, it seems like he is doing his best to socially work his way back into people's good graces. He was eating the worms with Jamie and Lauren, um, but he was still the one person who did vote for Brandon back in the camp. So if Brandon is in the power position, Kane could fall victim. But I will say, I did love his Dungeons and Dragons talk, his confessionals. And I don't know if they would have given us that if he wasn't around for at least a little bit longer. So I'm hopeful. I really like Kane. I think he just got unlucky at the beginning. And I, I like that he's recovering a bit here. Look at you reading the edits. Uh, at 11, I have uh, Matt. Uh, good news for Matt is that, like we said, Claire uh, told Franny uh, that his idol is a fake. I can't imagine Franny wouldn't pass that word on to her boyfriend. 
Uh, the bad news is like everything else. He still doesn't have a vote. And Franny is so much better at this than he is. And Heidi voted with the dominant alliance. So uh, like I said, if that tribe goes back to tribal, uh, he is one of my top two picks uh, to, to get sent home. Uh, spot 12, uh, Sarah, she said it. She's on the bottom of the tribe. Uh, I, I hope a tribe switch up or, uh, you know, switching, whatever whatever this twist is. I, uh, you know, again, this inheritance advantage has got it. Like, if, if, if you're definitely going out, what else? And this thing can't help you in other, any other way. I still think there's something to be said for if I am here after tribal, I will hand you potentially the most powerful advantage this game has ever seen. So uh, I, I, I think Sarah still has, has some, some weapons at her disposal. Uh, but again, I, she, she is up back against the wall uh, with her truck. Looking dicey. Looking dicey for Sarah. Um, 12, I've got Matt uh, over on Soka, so very close to where you have him. Everything you said, the fake idol, the no vote, the showman, he is in a tough spot. And just from what I saw, it seemed like Franny was doing a little bit more of the wheeling and dealing. So she might be a little bit more of the socially connected of the duo. I'm not sure how I felt about him telling both Danny and Josh that he found an idol. Um, you know, Josh seemed very excited about it and liked that. Matt told him that so that could have built some trust with Josh but I'm very much in the camp of don't tell anybody you found anything um you saw how that worked out for Jesse on my season like that was critical to his game and it, it played out great so that may have been a little tough to uh to let that information go even though Danny did set him up to be fair all right second to last at 13 I've got Jamie over on Ratu much lower than you I think Matthew's play of leading her to the fake idol signals that he is not about it. Um, we heard after week one that she was going to be the primary vote and then she played her shot in the dark. So maybe some of that reasoning is still lingering. And yeah, I just don't think it's a good sign if your supposed to plant daddy to your plant mommy is leading you to a fake idol. I don't think that's the sign of a healthy uh, alliance partnership. So I'm a bit worried for Jamie. She seems so nice, so genuine, so effervescent. Um, but I think Matthew is uh, more likely to get the best of her when it comes down to it. He seems like he's got that cutthroat uh, gameplay more so than she does. Now, just to dive in this a little deeper, Matthew could have led anybody to that idol. And he chose That's what I'm saying. Jamie. Right. He, and he That's chose what I'm saying. I view that as a negative. Yeah. But, but, but so say they go to tribal council next week. What's, what would be the, the point of even doing that? She doesn't have a shot in the dark. Uh, he's obviously better connected with everybody in the tribe. I, I guess I don't see, see the point of setting her up unless it is to to keep her around for longer. Hmm. I guess I see that argument. I don't know. I guess, yeah, that makes more sense than him just being a jerk and wanting it to be funny and, and leading her wrong. But And it is funny. I don't know. But, yeah. All right. I don't, we'll have to see. We'll see. That's why that's why they play the game, so they say. Uh, and 13, that's got to be Kane. Uh, I'm hoping the heat from the first vote has finally blown over. I, I just don't see how he works in anybody's game yet. You know, I don't see him talking strategy with anybody. Uh, you know, Matthew seems to be pulling the strings over there. I've never seen that duo talking strategy. Uh, you know, I enjoyed yeah. his his pipes listening to uh, his rendition yeah. of O Canada. And uh, his sword skills are on point. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I still think he is the, the lowest uh, rung of the ladder of that tribe. It's a real good point. You're you're noticing he's not talking game with anyone and they're not showing. And here I am clinging on to his Dungeons and Dragons edit, hope, hoping it means something. Well, I, I, I don't know if you're wrong. All right. So in the final spot, uh, we had this person in very different positions. I had Josh. Uh, you know, we spent the first two episodes, didn't see a single thing about Josh's social game. Uh, and when we did see it, it did not seem to be going well. It seems like he's not talking to everybody, which especially in a tiny, tiny tribe, uh, you know, if you're not, if you're not talking with me, I know you're not working with me, and I know you're probably working against me. So, um, you know that that, that if, again, if, if there's a swap, if there's a trade, if something like that, uh, he's like I said, challenge threats are in danger. He's a challenge threat. His own tribe doesn't seem that that tied to him. I, we don't know. We don't have a good look at who Danny is actually working with. It seems like he's running the show. So, uh, Josh, you know, uh, we we uh, and like Dalton Ross said, we didn't see his story yet. <laughs> so if we see his story next week, bye bye, Josh. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Josh, welcome to, to spot fourteen, buddy. Wow. Yeah. I'm. I hope that doesn't happen. But you laid out a really, really good argument. Um, for my final spot, I've got Sarah. Um, I think she could have handled the fallout with Carson much better. I mean, she told him to his face that his word doesn't really mean much to her anymore. But 
that doesn't mean a lot coming from me since I'm the one who told James I didn't even want to talk to him after he blindsided me. So she's playing it better than I did. But least. you guys are cool now. So it, it, we're cool like, now. Eventually, we're cool now. eventually it blows now, over. Yeah, easier said than done. But yeah, that felt a little clunky. Um, she could have maybe tried to put it on more, but I get it. She, I'm sure she was really upset about the Helen vote. But yeah, as I kind of laid out earlier when I was talking about Carson, it seems much simpler for Carson to just stay with Jam Jam and Carolyn and vote out Sarah than would be to try to like finagle something with Sarah in a 2-2 scenario. That's just a tough fight to fight this earlier in the game. All right, those are our picks uh, for for episode four. Uh, lock of the week, there is none. Nobody's safe uh, there as it should be. Uh, there's just too uh, you know too too diverse with our picks this week. So nobody's safe. Nobody nobody gets. Uh, we couldn't agree on anything um, <laughs> except that Dalton Ross is awesome. Uh, but we did have two biggest disparities of the week. Both Josh and Jamie are seven points uh, apart. Uh, if Josh goes, that's good news for me. If Jamie goes, that's good news for Owen. Yeah, it feels weird to root against anyone and be like, yeah, get voted out, Jamie. But I mean, I'm competitive. I want to I want to win this. And like you said, this isn't your first rodeo, but this is mine. And I'm I'm hoping to do well. But yeah, it's uh, it's weird to just like want this outcome to come out based on who loses. But we'll see. It's been a fun season so far. I'm really enjoying it. I love this cast. And that's that's made this game tougher. Um, but it's also made it really fun. Like I'm, I'm invested with all of these characters every week. And uh, it's been it's been a fun ride so far. You've got a solid lead, but I would warn you, I had a mega lead against uh, Taj um, from Survivor Tonkin Cheens, and mm, she came back and beat me her. by one point in the last episode. And it was so embarrassing uh, that when I met her husband, Eddie George, at the Survivor uh, 20 season reunion, he accused me of throwing the, the, the power rankings. He was like, <laughs> he's like, you can level with me. You, you just wanted to make her feel better. That's like, hilarious. Nope. Was he as incredible as, as he came off on the show? He seemed like such a great dude. Is this how you make a heart? Yeah, they both. I love them both. both. Yeah. yeah, I rewatched that recently. Was it on Netflix? I forgot mm -hmm. how amazing that auction moment was. Where I was like, "Oh yeah, see you back at the camp." Yeah, incredible. See you back at the camp. That was awesome. All right, our picks are locked in. Put your picks in the comment section below. If you beat Owen and I, uh, we're gonna throw a shout out your way. If you do horribly, you'll just get a gentle ribbing. Uh, be sure to come <laughs> back this Thursday for my exit interview that Owen can't be bothered to even watch. Uh, Owen, as always, I, I, I love you. You're a rock star. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to take part in this nerdy pursuit. That nerdy pursuits are my favorite pursuits. Happy to be here, man. All right. Well, we'll see you next Monday for even more Survivor Power Rankings. Bye, y'all.